a wiener, some crackers, uh, baking powder, oh, a mix of spices, a soft drink, and DNA. What do they have in common? Phosphates. You probably heard of phosphates, probably in conjunction with detergents where you don't want them because they get into the natural water system and fertilize the plants. And when the plants die, they use up the oxygen content of the water and that is not good for the fish. But uh, phosphates also serve a very important purpose as fertilizer. Without phosphates, we would not have the food that we have. And we would not be here without phosphates. Every cell in our body contains the DNA molecule, the classic blueprint of life. And uh, every yellow atom that you see here in this model is a phosphorus atom. It is embedded in something we call phosphate with four oxygens attached to it. And it makes up the backbone of, of DNA. Which means that when we build our DNA, we need phosphates in the diet. Where do we get it? Well, any time that we eat any plant or any animal, there will be phosphates in there because they all contain DNA. And that's where we get it. The body breaks down the DNA and rebuilds it in our cells as we need it. And there should be no problem with that, of course. Any excess uh, phosphate is excreted by the kidneys unless you have a kidney problem. And people who do have kidney problems have to very, very carefully watch their phosphate intake because their kidneys aren't filtering it out. However, within the last 20 years or so, our intake of phosphates has doubled. Why is that? Well, mostly because of its use as food additives. And there lies an issue because there are a few studies that have now shown that even people who do not have kidney problems have high levels of phosphate in the blood. And that in some studies has been linked with heart disease. It caused calcification of the arteries as calcium phosphate builds up in the arteries. How does this happen? Well, as I said, we have been using more and more food additives based on phosphates because phosphates are so useful. In the case of soft drinks like cola beverages, well, phosphoric acid gives an added tang to that. It also keeps the color from turning too black. In the case of spices, it keeps them free flowing. They don't stick together. In the case of baking powder, uh, acidic phosphates will release the carbon dioxide from, uh, from carbonates. There are all kinds of reasons in crackers. Phosphates tie up minerals like iron and copper, and those are always present in food supply and they catalyze oxidation reactions or spoilage reactions. But the reason that the industry really loves phosphates is because they hold on to moisture, to water. The reason that hot dogs are so juicy is because of the phosphate content. The reason that your butterball turkey turns out to be so juicy is because of the phosphate content. But this is where we are also getting a lot of phosphates in, in, in our diet. And as I said, the industry loves it because basically they can sell water as if it were meat. You pump something full of phosphates, it will hold on to, on to water. So is there a concern? Maybe so, because we are getting a lot of phosphates. But if we avoid foods that contain a lot of additives, we are automatically going to avoid phosphates. So that's another argument for eating more natural foods other than processed foods. And uh, one last little idea here, when you fry your bacon, you will notice that it shrinks. Well, that's because all of the moisture that was being held in by the phosphates now, of course, evaporates. And you can see from the size difference of the bacon strip before and after frying, why the industry loves those phosphates. But we should be wary of eating too many processed foods because as I said, even people who do not have kidney problems may have high levels of phosphate in their blood. So get out there, cook from fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, and uh, limit your intake of processed foods for many other reasons other than they contain phosphates.